familiar scene in the swamp as the Gators take the field here in Gainesville. But so much has changed. 90,000 fans eager to see the new look Gators here tonight. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN and College Football Primetime, presented by Five Hour Energy. Tonight, it's the season opener for the 22nd ranked Florida Gators as they take on the Owls of FAU. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Gainesville alongside my partner, former Michigan quarterback Brian Grease to play Matvick. It is the dawn of a new era in Florida. Nine months ago, this champ was the head coach in waiting in Texas. Now he is ready to lead the Florida Gators in his hometown. You know, Will Muschamp was too bright of a shining star to wait yeah. any longer to get a head coaching position. Eight and a half months ago, Jeremy Foley finds his guy, and now the anticipation has built to see what he can do with this Florida Gators program. He is going to bring a unique combination of football intelligence, passion and excitement for the game, and core principles that these kids will respect him for. Senior quarterback John Brantley will be under the microscope tonight. A lot of people think he should flourish in offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss's pro-style system. So many struggles from a year ago in a system that was not built for him. The coup of the offseason, in my opinion, is getting assistant coach Charlie Weiss. He will work miracles for John Brantley's confidence and put him in positions to succeed as a Florida Gators quarterback. won the toss and they have deferred to Florida so Florida will start with the football we'll see John Brantley right out of the gate Vinny Zaccario Kicks it off for the Owls, and Jeff Demps back to return for Florida. The Will Muschamp era is underway. A big return. Penalty flags are down. And Demps is gone. Touchdown, Florida, but there is a marker at the 30-yard line. An 89-yard return for Demps, Brian, but it might be coming back. Yeah, I think there was a hold on one of the Florida players. That ball came down really short around the 12 or 13 yard line. You don't want to give Demps that much grass. He is the fastest man in college football by far, but this kickoff return is coming back. They got D. Finley, the backup uh, linebacker, who is a special teams ace. You know, you come out the first kick of the new season with a new coach, a bunch of new players, and you have a, a huge play called back like that. That can be a def deflate this team, but now John Brantley's got to come out and get this offense going. See him on the right side of your screen on top of the player on the ground, it looked like. Didn't let him up off the ground. They called him for holding. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Gators at their own 20-yard line after the penalty. John Brantley under center for the first play from scrimmage. And he'll hand off to Chris Rainey. And it's a good run, a run of a first down. Out over the 30 to the 32. Looks like Florida's going to go with a no-huddle offense. Not a staple for Charlie Weiss, but right off the bat, we see Charlie Weiss's influence here. We, nobody knows what he wants to do coming into this football season, but we do know this. He wants to get the ball to his playmakers, Rainey and Demps. Rainey's in the backfield again, and it's an inside handoff to Rainey. This time he has swallowed up David Hines, the middle linebacker, who anchors the middle for FAU, makes the stop. It's a loss of two. You know, and as we go back, Clay, and, and talk a little bit about John Branley, his season a year ago, he was 
in a system, as we said, not fit for him, the three-quarterback system, running Urban Meyer's offense. He is a pure drop-back passer, and talking with him yesterday, he's very excited about having the opportunity to work with Charlie Weiss in a pro-style set, drop back, go through his reads, and use his arm, which is his best talent. Burton picks up the block. Brantley dumps it off to Rainey. And he gets to the 35-yard line before he is stopped by Randall Johnson, the weak side linebacker. It's a pickup of five for Florida. And it's going to bring up third down and seven. One thing that John Brantley told us about was learning this new offense. There was so much new verbiage, so much volume to Charlie Weiss's playbook. But Charlie Weiss said he has all the mental capabilities to do everything that Coach Weiss wants him to do. First series for the Gators. Brantley sets up the throw, fires it out to the right side. There's Trey Burton. Good catch and run. He's got a first down for Brantley Harstad. Ushers him out of the out of bounds after a gain of 10. Here are the Lee Impact players, Brian. Yeah, and we've already seen Jeff Demps on the kickoff return, but you're going to see him a lot on offense as well. He is fast. Jordan Reed was a quarterback a year ago, now a tight end. He might be their best threat. And on defense for Florida Atlantic, Marcus Bartles is their Tasmanian devil in the backfield. First down and 10 at the 46. Some shifting around. And Demps has checked into the game in the backfield. Yeah, Burton lined up in the slot to the bottom side. We will see him everywhere on the field in this offense. They go to Demps. And he is shoved back for a loss. Great pressure there. And Corey Henry, the strong side linebacker, the man that uh, makes the tackle at the point of attack. Jeff Demps, he is the fastest man in college football, as you mentioned, Brian, but they've got to get him into space. Yeah, they do have to get him into space. He's not a downhill big style of running back where he's just going to pound away at you. Not a power running back a gap to a gap. He's got to get to the perimeter to the outside and you've seen early on the Florida Gators try to get him the ball in the sweep. After the loss of four, second down at 14. Brantley again on the ground. It's Rainey trying to get to the outside. Steps out of a tackle. Gets across midfield and drives down to the 44-yard line of FAU. Bartels makes the tackle but it's a gain of 13 for Florida. All of these plays are perimeter plays for Rainey and Demps. You see this? Another sweep to the outside. Four times in this drive already, Florida has gotten the ball, whether they run it or whether they throw the swing pass to Rainey and Demps to get them space to make their move. Now third and manageable. Third down and one on the opening series for Florida in the 2011 season. And Brantley's going to keep it himself. And it looks like he's got enough for a Florida first down. It was a good awareness by John Brantley. I think he saw both defensive tackles spread out wide in a short yardage situation, and that's an automatic call for the quarterback. He just communicates with his center. The center snaps the ball, and he pushes through for the first down. Great awareness by John Brantley. Teammates have really noticed a difference in their signal caller this year. He is much more confident. Again, it's Demps. And it's going to be a short game. David Hines again there on the tackle. It's a pickup of one for the Gators. Yeah, we're going to go back and look at that third and one. You see the defensive tackles are wide right here. There's a gap for Brantley. Very aware. He just lets his center know, and that's an easy conversion. Florida ranked number 22, one of eight SEC teams in the preseason top 25, with just 10 starters back. The second fewest in the SEC. Trying to get out to a good start. Six running plays so far against two pass plays on this opening drive. Brantley cocks his arm, fires to the outside here. Hits Rainey in midstream. And it's another Gator first down. Treon Howard, the right side corner. Got him out. But they move the sticks again. Yeah, you can see... Charlie Weiss and John Brantley have found out very quickly that Florida Atlantic on defense is not going to cover the flat. They're worried about getting beat deep. They're worried about the speed of this Florida offense on the outside. And Charlie Weiss, one of the things that makes him so great is if he finds a weakness, he will continue to exploit it repeatedly. And you've seen now three swing passes on the first drive. Oh, there's a bad snap over the head of Brantley, and he dives on it at the 48-yard line. The snap issue rearing its ugly head on the opening series here in 2011. You know, I don't think there's a coincidence 
we see more bad snaps early in the season than any time during the season and it's because it's hot down there these big guys are sweating on the football the center's got his face over the football sweat dripping down there, and it gets slippery it happened with Mike Pouncey as we all know very well a year ago several times and that time it got Jonathan Harris well in this offense under Charlie Weiss we will probably see Florida go out of the gun less than last year but in that instance out of the gun snap goes high play action fake to Rainey Brantley over the middle Cox fires incomplete intended for the tight end Jordan Reed and no penalty flags down Demetrius Williamson the strong safety and good cover yeah good protection for John Brantley and Jordan Reed flashed early in that route John Brantley a little bit late with the throw but Jordan Reed is going to be a big part of this offense see Trey Burton uh, their fullback a starting fullback and one of the most versatile players on this offense looks like he's getting wrapped up may have a sore back now Florida in a third and very long third and 25 they're two for two on third down conversion so far on this drive they were 38 percent on third downs last year another play fake Brantley has time throws to the outside has a man caught at the 31 well short of the first down Quinton Dunbar the redshirt freshman receiver has it it's going to bring up fourth down for Florida that's a great play by John Bradley and it's a great play because he puts his offense back in position to attempt a field goal you're not going to convert third down at 25 but you can throw a 15 yard out route get back to the 33 yard line and allow your kicker Caleb Sturgis to come on and attempt a 50 yard field goal that's a great play by a senior quarterback Caleb Sturgis who uh Recovered from a stress fracture in his back last year, which cost him eight games last season on for his first attempt of the year. Out of the hold of John Crowfoot. And he got it. First points in the Will Muschamp era. And Florida leads it. 3 0. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy fixes tired fast. Visit fivehourenergy.com. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods, every season starts at Dick's. The drive results in points. In the swamp, Florida leads at 3 0. This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Last year, Florida was scoreless in the first quarter eight times. On the opening drive here in the season opener, it's 3-0 as Florida gets a 50-yard field goal from Caleb Sturgis. What did you make of John Brantley on that opening series? You know, drive? I thought he was efficient. He took what the defense gave him, uh, understood that they weren't covering the uh, perimeter of the field. They ran the ball and threw the ball on the perimeter and got three points out of it. Willie Floyd is back to return. He'll take it from the end zone and bring it out. Good coverage. FAU will start at their own 16-yard line. Well, some big news happening just moments before kickoff here tonight. Sharif Floyd, the sophomore defensive end, ruled ineligible to play in this game. And a statement came out. We have declared Sharif Floyd ineligible. He is not eligible to compete until the eligibility is handled and he is stated by the NCAA we will not have any additional comment on this matter until it is resolved so Floyd out for tonight first play from scrimmage for the Owls it's Graham Wilbert the quarterback dumping it off short to Xavier to the fullback and he is hit for a loss be a loss of three is Jelani Jenkins the weak side linebacker coming to make the pop yeah and all so true freshman Marcus Robertson came in from his corner position you're gonna see this defense has so much speed it's, it's amazing it's all about harnessing that speed and that's what Will Muschamp is so excited about with this team it's not like the cover was bare here there's a lot of talent and a lot of speed on this defense you'll see it tonight second down at 13 Nowhere to run. Alfred Morris does a good job staying on his feet to make something out of nothing. It picks up three. Matt Elam with the tackle and a man is down. 
for Florida Atlantic. Max Carrick, the right tackle, is slow to get up. A great start on the first couple of plays for this Florida defense. Only five starters back from a defense that ranks second best in the SEC last year. This is the last thing that Florida Atlantic needs. The strength of their team is the offensive line. And Carrick, right in the middle of the, of the screen on the right side there, the, the right tackle just got rolled up from the back side. Looks like an ankle. Ronald Powell, number seven, rolled up on the back side of him, and he just got caught. Anytime you're standing around the pile, you're at danger for injury because guys are flying around and Sometimes the best thing for offensive linemen to do is just fall on top of the pile so they don't get hurt. But this Florida Atlantic offense is going to be under siege early in this game, and to lose one of their best players on the offensive line is, is going to be tough. And the guy that draws the tough assignment is uh, sophomore Graham Wilbert. Coming into the swamp, he only has five career pass attempts. Never started a game for Florida Atlantic. He takes over for Jeff Van Camp, and... To come into this environment, hostile environment, crowd noise, and a fast defense, that's a tough call. We'll probably stick up David Cooey as well in this game, but Wilbur gets the start. And now third down and 10 for FAU. Morris again, straight ahead. Gets it across the 20. Lorente McCray, the strong side linebacker, puts it down. A pickup of six, and FAU's going to have to punt. First defensive series of the Will Muschamp era is a three and out with an impressive fashion. Swarming to the football in the backfield, creating havoc. He's got to be happy with the way that defense came out in the first time. Dan Quinn is the defensive coordinator, but certainly Will Muschamp is going to have a lot to say about how the defense plays every game out. Chris Rainey back to return this punt. Mickey Grudy. Bounces it at the 39-yard line, takes an FAU roll to the 32. And that's where Florida will have it for their second series when we come back, leading 3-0 with 6-10 to go here in the first quarter. The intensity of Will Muschamp coaching his first game here at Florida. He spent his childhood here in Gainesville where his dad, Larry, was a teacher and a coach. He played at Georgia. He was an assistant in the SEC, but it's always been a dream of his, Brian, to be a head coach in the SEC. Certainly, and not only that, but here to be here at Florida where he grew up, it's just the dream of a lifetime for him. He's coached some outstanding players, both in college and the NFL, and the thing about him is those players loved him, and these players will too very soon. First down at 10 at the Florida 33. Brantley goes up top on first down, trying to hit Quinton Dunbar. But Keith Reeser, the corner, was right there, stride for stride, second down. I love the play call. Everything that John Brantley has dealt with in the offseason, the question marks. Char make no mistake, Charlie Weiss wants to make an exclamation point, comes out in a no-huddle system, wants to get the offense going. Then he takes a shot down the field trying to get John Brantley going. So second down at 10, Demps will take it. Tries to get to the outside and cut the corner, but he's tripped up by Treon Howard, a loss of one. Now again, Florida in the hurry up here, Brian. Yeah, and again, they're trying to attack the uh, perimeter of the formation, and Treon Howard, a great play to come up from the corner position. He's a redshirt sophomore, making his second career start in the swamp, and uh, to come up and make that play on the fastest player in football, that was outstanding. Yeah, Florida two for three in third down situations here tonight. They've got a third and long coming up. That's where you got to be smart as a quarterback. Backed up in your own end, third and long. You got playmakers. You don't have to throw the ball 10, 12 yards. You can throw it five yards and let them run and convert. And now Charlie Weiss wants a timeout. Five twenty to go here, first quarter. Florida leading by a field goal. Clay and Brian. All right, Eamon, thank you very much. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Out of the Florida timeout, it's a third down and 11 for the Gators. Let's see what Charlie Weiss has drawn up. Brantley to the near sideline. It is caught. Frankie Hammond, Jr. 
looking to have a breakout year, picks up 15. Florida picks up the first down. Great touch pass on the outside. That was pretty well defended. You'll see this ball needs to get over the linebacker, but stay in bounds in order for him to get his feet in. Very accurate throw and a good sign for the Gator fans from John Brantley. At the 47-yard line, both Demps and Rainey on the field. Coming underneath, they go to Jeff Demps. And he'll pick up a couple. You know, we've seen some of the, of the plays that Charlie Weiss has incorporated in this offense already the no huddle is something that he did in New England with Tom Brady but you also see him getting a lot of players involved he loves to use personnel groupings and formations to attack defenses he's got the, the trigger man and John Brantley that can handle that the defense could go quickly Brantley sets up flares it out to Rainey Reeser with the tackle. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Florida. Let's go down to Allison Williams for the first time tonight. Hey, Clay. Some people wondered why offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss would make the move here to Gainesville. For him, the reason was simple. Family. Coming to University of Florida allowed him to keep his family together. His wife is a horse enthusiast. They have a horse farm in Ocala, about 30 minutes here. There's a great school there for his daughter who has special needs. She's very happy. And his son, who's 18, is a student here at UF and an in turn in the football department he has aspirations to follow in his father's footsteps so it all worked out for the Weiss family pass incomplete here from Brantley to DeBose thank you Allison and certainly we picked that up in our meeting with Charlie Weiss yesterday he is very happy here in Gainesville he is and it certainly worked out for his family great for him and great for them but you know everybody has the persona of Charlie Weiss as being a little standoffish a little brash but we had a really heartfelt conversation a day yesterday about the reasons he took a pay cut to come here to Florida but he did it and he sacrificed for his family and they're happy he has tutored some of the best quarterbacks Brantley hoping to benefit he throws on the run what a catch by Jordan Reed the tight end he is upended at the 24-yard line. It's a pickup of 15. Reeser brought him down, but what a snag. And make no mistake, Charlie Weiss did his due diligence and knows that there's a bunch of playmakers. Jordan Reed is certainly one of those. Watch the athleticism to go back behind him, keep the ball away from the defender, and comes down in an awkward position, but comes down with the football. Jordan Reed is going to be a huge part of this offense. Florida on first down and 10 and moving the football. Brantley on the run. Smart move. Throws it away. He was being pressured by David Hines. So second down and 10 coming up. Now Jordan Reed, Brian, is in a more traditional tight end role this year after spending some time at quarterback last year, as you mentioned. I mean, he's going to present matchup problems all season long for opponents. He's a nightmare, and he's six foot four, 240 pounds, and can go up and get the football. Watch for him in the red zone areas. John Brantley loves to throw the ball up and let him use his body to shield defenders and get the football. But if Jordan Reed stays healthy, he could challenge as an all SEC tight end this year. Brantley throwing more on this drive. Seven passes, one run on this series. He'll throw again. On second and ten, over the top, to the end zone, incomplete. Gerald Christian, the backup to Jordan Reed at tight end, the intended receiver, knocked down by Demetrius Williamson. Yeah, it looked like the two wide receivers got a little bit too close together. They're going to run a double post, and you can freeze it right here. They're too close together. There's not enough room. One defender can play two. John Brantley decides to go to the inside and throws the ball a little bit high. If you're going to do that, you want to throw the ball across the field, but play design broke down there. Gerald Christian, the tight end, got bumped off, and Charlie Weiss, as he installs this offense, the route tree, especially down in the red zone, his attention to detail will clean those kinds of things up as they go forward. There's another third down situation for the Gators. They're three for four tonight. Brantley throws. Caught. Dunbar hauls it in, and he's got enough for the first down. They have got sky-high expectations for this young man. Charlie Wise said Quinn Dunbar to start of spring was so deep on the depth chart, he was below the table. <laughs> but he worked hard, he practiced hard, and he studied his playbook. And Quinn Dunbar, as a redshirt freshman, has become the starting wide receiver for the Florida Gators. First down and 10 from the FAU 13. Plowing ahead is Jeff Demps. He is wearing number 28 this year, Florida fans. He wore number two last year, and he missed all of spring drills to run track, even considered giving up football to focus on track. Boy, is Will Muschamp glad that he got this guy back. 
Uh, he certainly is and have Rainey and Demps in the backfield at the same time which we're going to see quite a bit this season. They're back there right now. I don't know what kind of defense you play to stop those guys. Second down and 11 after the loss of one. Brantley looks over the middle now. Flares it out to the right side. Rainey the catch and touchdown. A 14-yard touchdown reception for Chris Rainey. He is hoping to put up big numbers in his senior campaign. Sturgis the extra point and Florida leads it 10 to nothing John Brantley already up over 100 yards passing and a touchdown he's taken what the defense gives him Charlie Wise has identified the fact that you freeze it right here you look at the flat there's nobody out there these guys are coming off both receivers are going to come up the field and that leaves the, the flat wide open and it doesn't have to be a great throw it just needs to get on him and there's too much area there left by the FAU offense or defense uh, for, for Chris Rainey coming right at you here this is a nightmare to try to tackle this kid in the open field good luck Rainey missed five games last year because of a suspension hoping to have a complete season this year that is very productive that's his fifth career touchdown catch and everything seems to be clicking on all cylinders for the Gators especially offensively here early well and we haven't seen a whole lot to be honest with you Clay we've seen perimeter runs and swing passes and that's what we've seen we haven't seen the ball thrown way down the field Charlie Weiss understands if Florida Atlantic is going to try to play safe keep all these routes in front of them and not let us get the ball deep let's swing the ball out to our playmakers that run 4-2 and 4-2-3 and let them make plays he is a patient man. That's the one thing I know about him. He will take what you give him and make you bleed a slow death. And he sits right down next to John Brantley, does Charlie Weiss. He has tutored some of the best. Tom Brady, Brady Quinn, Jimmy Clausen, Matt Castle, and now Brantley hoping to soak up all that knowledge from a guy who has four Super Bowl rings. Caleb Sturgis has to re-tee it. About 90,000 here to see the Will Muschamp debut. And so far, they have not been disappointed. Second time since 2005 that Florida is wearing the orange uniform. So a lot of things different here for the fans tonight. Good deep kick for Sturgis. Willie Floyd will think better of it and take a knee. First and 10 from the 20 for FAU. Well, be sure to watch BCS Countdown on ESPNU each and every Monday night. Our experts will provide an in-depth analysis of the BCS contenders and where each school stands after the weekend's college football action. BCS Countdown on the U Mondays at 7 Eastern. Big surprise last night, TCU getting upset by Baylor. Oh, man. Robert Griffin III, he started off his Heisman campaign early. <laughs> he was fantastic. Graham Wilbert away from center hands it off for Alfred Morris still on his feet and he's wrapped up by Lorente McCray no game second down and ten who is the next great Gator defender you can join the discussion at ESPNU by going to twitter.com slash ESPNU well, I hope they have their roster in front of them because there's a lot of young guys. They may not know all these guys' names. Dominique Easley is a contender, I think. Matt Elam, another guy, a true sophomore. They've got a lot of talent on this defense, but not a lot of experience. And again, Sharif Floyd ruled ineligible to play tonight. The sophomore defensive end for the Gators. Wilbert going deep. Incomplete. 
to bring up third down as Cunningham was the intended receiver. Let's go to Eamon McEnany in the studio. All right, Eamon, thank you very much. Meanwhile, back here in Gainesville, it is 10-0 Florida. The number 22 team in the country. Florida Atlantic trying to get something going offensively. Third down and 10, Morris is in the backfield to the right of Wilbur. Out of the shotgun, he'll throw. Pass is complete. Nixon Dorvillis, the backup tight end, makes the catch. But Pop Saunders, another young player in that Florida secondary, steps up to make the tackle, and FAU will have to punt it away. Yeah, we may see three or four freshmen play in that secondary, and it's been a little bit of an area of concern for Will Muschamp and Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator. But to quote Will, what Will Muschamp, he said, I'd rather start with athletic ability and get them experienced than go with experience without athletic abilities. And I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to figure a lot of things out here tonight. We're going to see Frankie Hammond Jr. return this punt now. There's a few guys listed on that depth chart at that special team. That's a good kick from Mickey Grudy. Frankie Hammond Jr. at the 25, changes directions, cuts it back up. On his feet to the 32-yard line. And a penalty marker is down. There's been a change in the efficient crew here tonight. Steve Shaw out of retirement to work tonight. Hubert Owens fell ill before the game. But just in case you're worried, we're in good hands. Steve Shaw is the director of the SEC official, so yeah. I think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> you bet he does. Illegal shift on the kicking team. That five-yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the run. This first is the end. first game of the final season in Howard Schnellenberger's distinguished career. The 77-year-old coach of FAU announced his retirement earlier this summer. 52 years. Oh, man, he's, he's been to, coaching. He's had some great games in his career. Played for Bear Bryant at Kentucky. Helped, helped coach with Bear Bryant at Alabama. Was his offensive coordinator. Recruited Joe Namath to Alabama. He's got a long story career in college and the NFL. Florida back on offense. Chris Rainey gets the handoff and bumps it outside. It's going to be a gain of about six yards before Marcus Bartels brings him to the ground. And Howard is coaching from the press box tonight. He had hip replacement surgery last month, and it was giving him some pain last night. Decided he'll work from the box tonight. Well, they were coming up in the team bus, and the, the bus wasn't big enough, and Howard was cramped in there, and the bus was bouncing up and down. It hurt his hip, so he had to go to the hospital. Demps, first down and more to the 40. And down to the 35-yard line, Treon Howard caught up with the fastest man in college football, but not before a gain of 22. This offensive line is opening up big holes on the inside. You see Jeff Demps already a little gassed, and Charlie White said Demps and Rainey are going to be tired at the end of all of our ball games this season. They are going to get the ball and get it often, and you can see why. I'd give it to him too. A very good opening quarter. The first quarter for Will Muschamp as head coach at the University of Florida. He won a national title as an assistant coach at LSU. Now as head coach here in Gainesville. He is helping to lead this program back to national prominence. Look at the intensity of Will Muschamp. It's 10-0 Florida after one. Muschamp's goal was to be a head coach by the age of 40. Well, he got it done. He turned 40 this summer. Second youngest head coach in the SEC. Only Dan Mullen at Mississippi State is younger. He is 39. He's got to be happy with what he has seen so far, Brian. He's got to be very happy. And you know the thing you see about those pictures is he loves to have fun, too. He's yeah. not all serious and stare you down. He knows when to have a good time and when to be serious. This drive continues for Florida. First down at 10. It is Demps. And he escapes. First down. Inside the 20. Up the sideline. Touchdown. A 
A 35-yard touchdown run for Jeff Demps. Eighteenth career touchdown run for Jeff Demps. And Sturgis comes on. Extra point is good. It is 17-0. Florida. Three plays, 68 yards. The scoring drive lasted just over a minute. Another play on the perimeter. Look at the blocking by the left tackle, Xavier Nixon, and the tight end. This is Jordan Reed right here, the former quarterback. He gets the kickout block, and the one seam is all Jeff Demps needs. Once he gets level, it's good night. Lots of receivers on the outside. Dunbar, Deontay Thompson, that's Frankie Hammond, number 85. They know that they've got home run hitters in the backfield, and any, any block, anything they can get on the second level could turn what is a 10, 15-yard gain into a house call. So Will Muschamp, Charlie Weiss, they are harping on these wide receivers every single day in practice. Every little bit of effort on the second level counts with home run hitters like Randy and Demps. Now the biggest thing that the Gator fans wanted this season was that Florida would fix its offense. Six times last year, the Gators failed to hit 300 yards of total offense. I think it's fair to say that's why Charlie Weiss was hired. They're already at 177 yards of total offense, and we're just underway here in the second quarter. I know Charlie Weiss, and I know he'd like to see those numbers in about a month from now. Yeah. <laughs> when the SEC schedule starts. And we'll talk more about the schedule. It is brutal for Florida. The games that lie ahead. On the return, it's Willie Floyd. He finds a seam. Cuts it back up the middle. Close to midfield, down at the 47-yard line. A 37-yard return for FAU's Willie Floyd. Let's go to the studio and Heyman McEnany. Steve Spurrier deciding to go with Connor Shaw over Steven Garcia in that game. On first down, Alfred Morris is denied any running room. Lorente McCray. The tackle is a loss of three. A new quarterback for FAU. David Cooey is on, the junior, out of Pensacola, Florida. He lost out to Wilbert two years in a row to be the starter, but Howard Schnellenberger traditionally has gone with his backup early on in the second yeah, quarter. And you don't have to adjust your uh, television set at home. He is 6'7, 210 pounds, and looks like a string bean out there. He needs to get in there and eat a couple peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at training <laughs> table if you're going to play in the swamp. Wilbert is also tall at 6'6, but he's got more weight on his bones. To the outside, that pass incomplete. Cooey misfired to Darian Williams. And so now third down and 13. Here are the impact players presented by Lee Jeans and Alfred Morris, Brian, could be the career rushing leader at FAU when he leaves after this season. Yeah, he's got a tough assignment tonight on defense for Florida. Dominique Easley talked a little bit about him at the open. He's got a quick first step and a lot of talent. And the leader of that secondary, true sophomore, Matt Elam, hasn't played a whole lot, but he was the number one defensive back coming out of high school two years ago, and they want him to be the leader on defense. Cooey battling the swamp. Flags down, and the play whistled dead. It's going to be delay a game. Delay of game, number seven on the offense, five yard penalty. A crowd down. in the swamp, always a factor. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely a factor, and Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator for Florida, is not going to call off the dog, certainly. And for your first snaps as a collegiate quarterback, David Cooey to be in the swamp in this kind of environment, you're just hoping to get the snap from center. <laughs> you're not looking at the play clock. Third down and 18 for FAU. Cooey in trouble. Flags down again, and Cooey is down.
A loss of seven as Ronald Powell, the Buck defensive end, comes in to make the play. And the penalty is going to be against FAU. Well, there's Dan Quinn, last 10 years. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. The penalty will be declined. Fourth down. Quinn has spent in the NFL as a D-line coach. He was on Nick Saban's staff at the Miami Dolphins with Muschamp. He wants to play an attack style, and we're seeing that here tonight. He's, he's coached some outstanding players in the NFL. Jason Taylor with the Miami Dolphins, Kevin Carter. He coached Bryant Young, San Francisco 49ers. This man knows how to coach defense alignment. And one of the knocks on this defense a year ago was the defense alignment. Didn't play hard, didn't get enough pressure. Only 21 sacks last year. Dan Quinn's been brought in to fix that. Mickey Grudy on to punt. First team all Sun Belt last year. Good kick, bounces at the 30. And takes a nice roll for the Owls inside the 10 yard line. A 59 yard punt for Mickey Grudy. So a long field for Florida when we come back. But they've put points on the board here in the first half. 13 09 to go before halftime. John Brantley and this Gators offense looking good here in the first game of 2011. 3-3 three, three and outs for Florida Atlantic. Florida, meanwhile, scoring in all three of its possessions, a field goal and two touchdowns. Kirk Herb Street High School football returns to ESPNU tomorrow with a pair of games. First at noon Eastern, St. Xavier takes on Pickerington Central. And at 3.30 Eastern, Springfield faces Upper Arlington. Kirk Herb Street High School football Sunday on ESPNU. On first down, it is Chris Rainey. And he's got enough for the first down out across the 20, down to the 24. Marcus Bartels, the walk-on in 2008. He's been busy making tackles in that FAU secondary. It's a gain of 15. You can see last year what this Florida Gators team was able to accomplish. Not many big plays, only eight plays per game of 10-plus yards. They were very pedestrian tonight. They've already surpassed that by two. Burton lined up as a fullback. Now he moves to the slot. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of shifting. Like That's what Charlie Weiss likes to do to create matchups. Burton in the slot could be a matchup. Randley away from center. Hands off to Rainey, and he is plowed. Andre Kirk, the middle linebacker, steps up and drops him for a loss of two. Sometimes we watch this offense. Charlie Weiss will try to create an illusion of complexity guys moving around lining up in different spots so the defense can't get a beat on what you're trying to do but really he wants to be very simple wants to run the ball and play action off of it and take advantage of guys out of position there's a pass that's complete for a short game to Deontay Thompson he is the most experienced Gator receiver picks up three yards there so it'll be third down and about seven to go Thompson uh, led the team with 38 catches last year. They're really looking for someone to distinguish themselves in that receiving core, hopefully tonight, but certainly early in the season. I don't know if it's going to be one guy, but certainly Thompson has the most experience. But Dunbar, I think, is the guy they're really excited about. He's made two or three plays already. On third down, Brantley throws to a man, caught it for 41. It's Jordan Reed. Created enough separation there between himself and Brentley Harstad to haul that in for a gain of 13 and a Florida first down. A completely different John Brantley from a year ago. Look at his drop in the pocket. Very confident, meaningful hitches, steps into his throw, and accurate on time to Jordan Reed for a big third and seven conversion. John Brantley has matured over a year ago, used the adversity uh, from a year ago to help him this year, and Charlie Weiss has continued to preach a short memory. Forget about all the bad things. You've got a great opportunity this year and a new offense to lead this football team to great things. Already 126 yards passing for Brantley. They go back to Dempsey on the ground. He runs into a tackler. He lost the ball. Ball comes loose. And uh, they're going to mark it down. It's a gain of one as Florida gets it back. So second down and nine coming up. 
But he just ran into his own man, Jordan Reed, there, and wasn't uh, he was caught off guard. That ball did come out, certainly was a fumble, and Flores lucky to get the ball back. It was Matt Patch in the right tackle who recovered it. And junior out of Tampa. So now second down and nine for the Gators. They've scored on every possession tonight. Play fake. Brantley sets up plenty of time. Now the pocket closes in. Complete to Frankie Hammond Jr. along the near sideline. He lost her. They're going to rule him down. A first down for Florida. It's a gain of 12 as Hammond Jr. makes the catch. I'll tell you, the thing that is impressing me about John Brantley now, he's not forcing the ball down the field. That's the sign of a mature quarterback. That was a play designed to take a shot. It wasn't there, so he just checked the ball down, gain of 15 and a first down. 14th first down for Florida tonight. First and 10 at the 47 of FAU. Play fake, rolling out. Another completion caught at the 40-yard line by Gerald Christian. The backup tight end, Martin Wright, made the stop. Florida moves the sticks one more time, and we go to the studio for an update with Eamon McAdee. Now the uh, old ball coach sweating a little bit here tonight. And a penalty marker comes in. That last play was actually about a half yard short of the first down, so second and short coming up, but a penalty flag. And it's going to go Illegal against four. substitution on the offense, breaking the huddle with 12. Five-yard penalty, second down. When you go back and you talk about the decision that Steve Spurrier made to start Connor Shaw uh, and whether that has gone back to bite him a little bit in this football game, but Gator Nation knows very well sometimes those decisions come back to get the old ball coach. Steve Spurrier, of course, a Heisman Trophy winner here at Florida. And a very successful football coach as Will Muschamp's era begins here tonight. Very pleased with what he's seen from John Brantley so far. 14 of 19 for 147 and a touchdown. Double play fake. Time to throw. Swings it out in the flat. Deontay Thompson, room to run. Out at the 30. Another Florida first down. A late flag comes in out of bounds. Have been a late hit. Dead ball, personal foul, number three on the defense, late hit out of bounds, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. They really like Keith Reeser's upside. He's a sophomore, but he made a boneheaded play here. Yeah, you're just going to see once Charlie Weiss crosses the 50, he likes to take a shot. That's the area. Wanted to throw the post downfield. Good coverage by Florida Atlantic. Good decision by John Brantley. Just swing the ball outside again. Florida Atlantic not covering the flat and a big gainer. First and 10 from the 15. Brantley gives it to Rainey. Takes it in for another Florida touchdown. Boy, they are making it look easy. Sturgis to make it 24-0. Nine plays, 91 yards, four and a half minutes. Boy, Demps, Rainey, Rainey, Demps, you take your pick. But if this offensive line blocks like this this season, it doesn't matter who's carrying the football. The Florida Gators are going to score touchdowns. Here's the legendary coach Howard Schnellenberger in his 11th season now at Florida Atlantic, a program he built from scratch. 77 years old, he has decided to retire after the year. He is our 
quest for the coach's trophy spotlight presented by Dr. Pepper. His career started in 1959 at Kentucky. He's really a coaching icon and made such a, an impact and the ripple effect throughout all of college football because of Howard Schnellenberger and what he was able to do in reviving the program at the University of Miami, reviving the program at the University of Illinois, and now starting a program at Florida Atlantic. It's just unprecedented amongst the coaching ranks in the history of college football, really. One of nine active coaches with the national title. You talked about that year that he won a national title with Miami. 1983 championship, the only loss for the Canes that year to Florida. In the season opener, here's Willie Floyd on the return for FAU, trying to get something going down 24 to nothing. And get it out to the 19-yard line. This Howard Schnellenberger as a tight end at Kentucky in the mid-50s. But knew the coaching was his calling. Went on to be an offensive coordinator for Bear Bryant, then on to Miami later. His hometown, Louisville, Kentucky, would come calling. And the Cardinals program really got going under him. Had to stop over at the Miami Dolphins there for a couple of years, too. If he could have got a better quarterback, it might have been better. <laughs> David Cooey tripped up in the backfield and down at the 10-yard line. Everything going Florida's way. A loss of nine on that play. Second down and 19 coming up for the Owls. You were alluding to that 1972 season where Bob Greasy quarterbacked the Dolphins to a perfect record. The only one in NFL history. Yeah, well, and Howard Schnellenberger's more credit than, than Bob Greasy. No, I can't say that. I'm going to catch heck. Your dad might be listening. we got to be careful. <laughs> Boy, no, look Howard, at Howard was the offensive coordinator. Cooey hands off. Alfred Morris will get a couple of those yards back. And a long third down situation coming up. Jelani Jenkins on the tackle. Let's go down to Allison. Guys, it is so weird not to see Howard Schnellenberger on the sidelines for FAU. This is the first time in the program's history he hasn't been there. He is their only coach. And I talked to defensive coordinator Kurt Van Valkenburg, who's a longtime friend and assistant of Coach Schnellenberger's, and he said it's just going to be really odd without him there, but he hoped it would maybe give the guys some more incentive to show that he has trained them right. And the guys said, look, Coach prepares us to deal with anything. This is just one of those things, guys. He is a treat to talk to. Cooey away from center on third and 16. Running for the first down. Will he get it? No, he's going to be stopped short. He is going to pay the price. Moses Jenkins stepped up to lay the hit. It's a gain of 12 for Cooey, but boy, he's going to feel this tomorrow. I don't know, man. Cooey lowered his shoulder. I take the string bean comment back. Look at him lower his shoulder. He, he didn't necessarily get knocked back. He went over. Good thing he went a little high on that yeah. one. Otherwise, he might have gone the other direction, but great effort by a young kid just trying to make a play, trying to dive for a first down and, and jumpstart your offense. Give him credit. So the punting unit will come back out on fourth down and one. And Rainey will go back to return this kick. Delay of game, number 17 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That's the second delay of game on FAU tonight. You know, one of the things we haven't really talked about, we've talked about offense and defense for the Gators, but we really haven't talked about special teams. And it might be the determining factor of what kind of season they have in the SEC this year. You've got guys like Demps and Rainey taking kickoffs back. Rainey also takes punts. Frankie Hammond has taken some punts back. It could be a big factor for them this year. High snap and Grudy barely got it off. Good field position for Florida. They're going to have it at their own 47-yard line. Corey Henry back there. 6.04 to go here in the half. ESPNU College Football Primetime is brought to you by Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. 24-0 Gators. Back in the swamp in a moment.
Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Alongside Brian Greasy and Allison Williams on Play Mantic. A lot of firsts tonight for this Florida program. And now these Gator fans are going to get their first look at super true freshman Jeff Driscoll, the number one quarterback on the ESPNU 150 last year out of Haggerty High School in Oviedo, Florida. This is from the Under Armour All-America game last year. And there you see at the end the Gator Chomp. He knew where he was going to school. I like it. A little bravado, a little moxie for a young man. He's got the size in the arm, 6'4", 235 pounds. You saw him running. My goodness, 1,000 yards rushing as a senior. Pretty good. He's out of the gun on his first collegiate play. Wants to throw out of the pocket. He's got good wheels, too, across midfield and steps out of bounds. Unscathed at the 48-yard line. Boy, Charlie Weiss loves this kid. Yeah, he certainly does, and I think he had the conversation this week with Coach Muschamp. Listen, if we get up in this ball game, I want to get Jeff Driscoll in in meaningful situations. I don't want to put him in at the start of the fourth quarter by a big lead and, and, and not allow him to throw the football. So they want to get him some experience. The last thing they want to do is start next year, first snap of the first season with Jeff Driscoll not having any experience. He had 1,800 passing yards last year as a senior in high school, 1,300 rushing yards, and 35 total touchdowns. Second down and five. Under center this time, play fake. He's under pressure. Gets away from a tackler and gets back to the line of scrimmage and now hauled out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Corey Henry made the tackle. Kevin Surreal almost dumped Driscoll for a loss. You know what the interesting thing about Jeff Driscoll is, too? He committed to Florida before Urban Meyer decided that he was going to leave. And so he knew that he had the athletic ability to potentially run the spread offense. And then quickly when Florida made the decision to hire Will Muschamp, and oh, by the way, here comes Charlie Weiss, Jeff Driscoll says, great, I'm going to learn how to be a pocket guy and keep my mobility and, and extend plays and make plays. It's the best of both worlds for Jeff Driscoll and the Florida Gators. Here he is now on third down and three. And the ball slips out of Driscoll's hands. A penalty flag is down, too. Delay of game, number 16 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. Second penalty tonight against the Gators. Well, you see that time and again with young quarterbacks, the lack of awareness of the play clock, and that's just an experience thing. you got to be out there. you got a million things going through your head. i got my wristband. i got to try to call this play from Charlie Weiss, who's an icon in the coaching industry, and uh, I'm just trying to make a few plays here. And, oh, by the way, there's a play clock out there you got to keep track of. His head's got to be swimming a bit. 4.40 to go here in the first half. Driscoll on third down and eight. Has time to throw. Throws it high and it's intercepted at the 30-yard line. Bartels with the interception. On his feet into Florida territory. Brings it inside the 40-yard line. Hunter Joyer finally makes the stop. It's a 31-yard return for Bartels after the interception. Well, in the first career pass for Jeff Driscoll, not a good one. Ball just sailed on him. He was trying to hit Jordan Reed on a crossing route over the middle, and the ball just came out of his hand high, and it was an easy interception. You're going to see he had a good drop, plenty of time in the pocket. Jordan Reed's running a crossing route. That ball is thrown into Orlando. <laughs> that ball was so high, but you know, he's a little bit nervous. That's a difficult throw for your first throw in college football. Graham Wilbert back in the game. Incomplete to Darian Williams. Second down and 10 coming up. Let's go back to our uh, Twitter question here tonight. And uh, who's going to come out as the next great Gator defender? And Jamichael G says it's going to be Ronald Powell. Hard to argue with that. No, Ronald Powell's a heck of a player. Matt Elam we mentioned. But Powell is uh, the type of player, he's going to play that buck position in the Muschamp Quinn defense. They try to orchestrate a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups for him to try to make plays, get to the quarterback. Wilbert off his back foot comes underneath to Damian Fortner, and he is dumped at the 44-yard line by John Bostic. He is an excellent pass coverage linebacker, but he's also a great tackler. 
Yeah, he's also the leader of this defense. I mean, he's the guy calling defenses from a linebacker position. He's intelligent, he's mature, and he is the coach on the field for Dan Quinn. You see the reaction time here. He's got plenty of speed and recognition. That screen pass had no chance. So a loss of four on that play for the Owls. It's third down at 15 from the 43 of Florida. FAU trying to get points on the board before the end of the half. Wilbert pressured, throws on the run, complete at the 15-yard line. Nixon Dorvillis, the tight end with a big play for FAU. They keep the drive alive after a gain of 28. Nice job by Wilbert of extending the play. Gets outside the pocket. You'll see that Norvillis just runs up the field. And then when Wilbert comes up to try to run, the defense sucks up and Norvillis is open behind them. Good throw and a catch. Difficult catch getting hit from the safety. First, first down tonight for the Owls. Now Wilbert looks right, comes back left, and throws it over the top of the intended receiver, Darian Williams. Down to Allison. The first person Driscoll talked to when he came to the sideline was John Brantley. They came over to take their spots on the bench, and Driscoll went to sit in his usual spot, two away from Charlie. Brantley said, uh-uh, move on down, buddy. You're sitting right next to the offensive coordinator. They had a little chat after that INT. I think it's great. I think John Brantley can certainly help Jeff Driscoll. Brantley knows that this is his last season here in Florida, and there's not a bigger Florida fan in the world than John Brantley. Grew up loving the Gators. He wants to see Jeff Driscoll succeed when he's gone. His dad, John, was a quarterback here at Florida back in the late 70s. Play fake. Wilbert complete to Xavier Stinson. And he's got enough for an FAU first down inside the five. Bostic made the tackle. It's a gain of 11 as FAU has not been on the door for the first time. You know what? This is a great opportunity. I know Will Muschamp is thinking in his head. We had a sudden change situation. Young quarterback. I want to see how my defense reacts to adversity. Sudden change. We want to get a stop. And certainly two first downs now for Florida Atlantic on offense. But Dan Quinn and Will Muschamp want to see their defense stiffen here inside the five. First down and goal. Wilbert play fake throws incomplete. Wilbert clobbered as he released it. William Green, the defensive end, got in there. So did McCray. Well, that play was made by Dominique Easley, number two, right in the middle of the screen. Go ahead and run it. You're going to see he is a disruptive force. He's got a great first step. He gets by the block of the guard and almost gets to the quarterback. The thing that makes Dominique Easley so difficult to block is his first step. He's very quick, but he's big enough, 282 pounds, to use his strength to get by blockers as well. He could be one of the next great Gator defenders, certainly. One of the three sophomores they're very high on here. Penalty flags in on second down and goal. Blake Nels tackled. A loss of six, but we'll see what this flag is about. And Steve Shaw is our referee tonight. You know, illegal motion, number nine on the offense. That penalty is declined, third down. And we were talking with the coaching staff uh, yesterday about Dominique Easley, and last year was a tough year for him. He's out of Staten Island, New York. He's a long way from home, a little bit homesick, didn't have the kind of maturity. He skipped some practices, got in trouble with the coaching staff and Urban Meyer, but rededicated himself in the offseason and has made a certain impact for this Florida defense. Well, Florida timeout. wants a timeout. Florida, that's their second timeout of the half. Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator, has an embarrassment of riches on the defensive side of the ball. We'll talk more about them when we come back. Driving the upset bid, we'll check in on Oregon and LSU and South Carolina trailing East Carolina in the first half. But now let's send it back to Clay and Brian in Gainesville. All right, Eamon, thank you very much. Florida being tested here on the 
defensive side of the ball for the first time tonight. Third down and goal from the 10 after the penalty for FAU. And they're only going to pick up one here as Williams, the tight end, makes the catch. So fourth down for FAU. And the field goal unit will come out. Well, and they got the stop that they wanted. And Bill Muschamp, make no mistake, when they watch the film tomorrow, they're going to talk about sudden change. And you're going to have turnovers during the course of the game, but you cannot allow touchdowns. They brought an internal all-out blitz there, forced a quick throw, but was in position to make the tackle before the first down. Good execution. 27-yard field goal attempt for Vinny Zaccario, a junior out of Valrico, Florida. And FAU is on the board for the first time tonight. It's 24 to 3 with a minute 22 to go in the half. Plays 29 yards, three minutes and four seconds. The time of the drive for Florida Atlantic. And we were talking about the defensive side of the ball for Florida, and especially that young defensive front. There are three sophomores with all SEC potential up there. One not playing tonight, Howard. Yeah, and the guy coaching them is that man right there in blue, Bryant Young, the uh, all-pro, four-time all-pro defensive tackle for the San Francisco 49ers. Played 14 years in the National Football League and he was an all decade member for the 90s for the defensive tackle position but he has brought a level of professionalism to this defensive line those guys look up to Bryant Young Dan Quinn brought him into Florida because he was his coach at San Francisco and Dan Quinn said Bryant Young demonstrated for me what it meant to be a professional and everything that you do on and off the field and when Bryant Young talks in that meeting room those young guys up front, those four true sophomores, they listen. You guys played in the Pro Bowl together once upon a time, and I know he made an impact on you almost immediately. Well, certainly, <laughs> I remember a few impacts. I, <laughs> I was a few notches on the BY's belt, trust me. He's without one of his pupils tonight, Sharif Floyd, who we talked about before the game found out he was going to be ruled ineligible for this contest by the NCAA. And until the NCAA figures out What's going on with Sharif Floyd? He will be unable to play. We'll try to get more on that as this game goes on. Return out to the 30-yard line for Jeff Demps in Florida. We'll go back to work. Monday's on ESPNU. Jesse Palmer and David Pollock provide an engaging and interactive look at the past week's college football action and set the scene for the week to come. Strap yourself in for an entertaining and opinionated three-hour college football forum. Palmer and Pollock at 1 and 10 Eastern every Monday beginning on September 5th. John Brantley goes back in for Florida. Yeah, it's an interesting decision. Charlie Weiss decided to take Driscoll back out after the interception. See how that affects his psyche going forward. Brantley out of the gun on first down. Throws, tipped and intercepted. Picked off at the 40-yard line by the inside linebacker, Tony Moore. And Florida... Atlantic has great field position with a minute and eight seconds to go here in the half. I think the defensive lineman, number 92 Seville, watch him on the edge. They tried to cut him unsuccessfully, and he got his hands on that football to make a huge play here and get another turnover in Florida Gator territory. Last two Florida passes have resulted in interceptions. Remember last year, Florida had the most turnovers in the SEC with 27. Great opportunity here for FAU. Wilbert on the run, throws. It is caught. Dort Villas, the tight end, inside the 20-yard line, and FAU is in business. First down and 10. Yeah, Florida Atlantic moving the pocket. I like the play action. Get outside the pocket, avoid the rush. Great throw on the run, and Orvilla snatch it, snatches it out of the air. Orvilla is a, is a playmaker for this Owl offense. Just a, a redshirt freshman, but he is the talent to get downfield and create mismatch problems. Already in field goal range, but they're looking for more. They've got it at the Florida 17-yard line.
Morris. He has been bottled up all night. And Jelani Jenkins, the weak side linebacker, who had 76 tackles a year ago, makes the tackle here. The clock is running under 50 seconds. Yeah, and you got to get a timeout in that situation. I think uh, Florida Atlantic did get the timeout. If you're Daryl Jackson, you have got to get the ball on the edge. Don't even try to run the ball in between the tackles because this defense for Florida is too stout up the middle. I like the first down call play action roll your quarterback outside buy him some time and allow your receivers to get open downfield. He needs to do more of that if he's going to get the ball in the end zone. Well, FAU already has a field goal tonight from Vinny Zaccario. And they are certainly in his range right now. But if they could get a touchdown big, here, big. wow, that would be huge. It would be. Go down. I mean, only be a two two score game if they get a touchdown here. I guarantee you that's what uh, Daryl Jackson's saying to them in the huddle. But you got to make sure you secure three points here. Don't do anything that's going to create a turnover, a potential turnover, and take away the ability to get three points. Saw the uh, numbers, just two rushing yards so far tonight for FAU, but here. A chance to get a touchdown on the board before half. Mills is back in the game to the left of Wilbur. He'll get it, and he'll be hit immediately. Jay Howard and Dominic Easley combine on the stop, and it's a loss of two. Well, Daryl Jackson didn't listen to me. <laughs> I tried to run it right up the middle. You're not going to be able to run it past Howard and Easley. Those guys are getting off the football and just manhandling the offensive line for Florida Atlantic. You've got to be able to throw the ball on the edge, run it on the edge, if you're going to get this ball in the end zone for Florida Atlantic. There's Howard, 6'3", 303. The leading tackler among those returning on that defensive line. And now a timeout called by the Owls. And Wilbert will go talk with Daryl Jackson. There he is, the fifth-year coach who runs the offense for FAU. 17 seconds to go before half. Take a look at what this deep, how it's going to look different under Will Muschamp and Dan Quinn. This is a traditional 4 3 defense. Four down linemen, and then you're going to have three linebackers in the back, but you're also going to see a 3 4 defense sprinkled in. This time, you see the defensive tackles getting off the ball in the 4-3 those defensive tackles are disruptive they have one gap and they coach them to get up the field and be disruptive sometimes in the 3-4 it's a little bit different those guys need to take on two gaps and prevent running backs from getting through and keep, keep offensive guards off the linebacker big third down here for FAU Tonight, just one of six on third downs. Keep an eye on Dorvillis. He's right here. He's their best playmaker. Wilbert on the run. Caught by DeAndre Richardson. And they're going to have to run the uh, field goal unit on, you would think, here with 10 seconds to go. Take a look at Dorvillis at the bottom of the screen. He's wide open. Nobody runs with him. It looked like he wanted to be a drop back pass. There's nobody on Dorvillis. Wilbur just didn't have the sight to get the football to him. Looked like he got flushed out of the pocket. And sometimes when you're getting your brains beat in back there as a quarterback, it's hard to stay in the pocket and go through your reads. Sometimes you get flushed out of the pocket premature. 34-yard attempt for Zaccario, who already has a 27-yarder under his belt tonight. This time, no good. But there is a marker down on the play. Let's see if FAU gets another chance. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number seven against Florida. That penalty will be half the distance to the goal. It'll be first and ten, Florida. It's against Florida, but it's not going to hurt the Gators that much. Well, it's not going to hurt the Gators, but it will hurt Ronald Powell and his good graces with Coach Muschamp. I can tell you, Coach Muschamp has little tolerance for these kinds of mental mistakes uh, and attitude mistakes. And 
Dan Quinn's going to give him an earful, and I'm sure he'll get an earful from Muschamp. Towards the left of our screen here, he gets pushed out, and he just retaliates, and then he takes a swipe at the face mm -hmm. mask, and that's going to get a foul every single time. Ronald Powell, all SEC his freshman year, had a great spring. And the Gators hope that he can bolster that pass rush. That is going to be his specialty this year. The team only had 21 sacks a season ago. Final seconds here of the first half. And it's been an impressive one for the Florida Gators under Will Muschamp for the first time. And a commanding lead going into the locker room, 24 to 3. Yeah, Will Muschamp's got to be very pleased with his first half of football and his first game in Gainesville. And you look at uh, these stats, heavily weighted towards the Gators, especially the rushing yards. But the only blemish, the two turnovers, and that's something that Will Muschamp uh, will emphasize throughout the course of the year. And I'm sure they'll hear about it at halftime. 264 yards of total offense for the Gators in that first half. So 62 yards of offense for FAU, but on the ground, minus one. 24 to three. The Gators with the lead. Will Muschamp having a discussion with Steve Shaw on his way off the field. Let's go down to Allison, who's with the coach. Coach, what were you talking to the refs about there? Uh, we just got to get our kids straight now and get them calmed down a little bit. Uh, we really had a good first half. We had a situation there. We had a bad snap on the first series. We still got a field goal out of that. Uh, we wanted to get Jeff in the game and get him some meaningful snaps. Unfortunately, we got an overthrow right that and a tip ball with the interception. Defense made two good stands. We got to keep playing hard, fast, and physical. We had one bad kickoff return come out. We'll get that corrected. You said you wanted to see effort. You wanted to see toughness. How did they measure up? I think I think we're doing okay. We got to continue to win on the line of scrimmage, and that's really it's a line of scrimmage league that we're in. We got to play well. Thanks, coach. Guys. Well, the Florida offense struggled last year. We have seen none of that tonight. Once again, our score at the half, Florida 24, FAU 3. Time now for our halftime report. Let's send it to Eamon McEnany.